to grant the request as presented? Yes. Is there a second? Motion fails lack of second. Can we get a different motion? I have a motion from Dr. Howler to reject the request. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second from Mr. McCall. All in favor of the request, please raise your hand and hold it. All opposed, raise your hand and hold it. All right, so we have a 3-2 to not approve Mr. Housel's request, denying the request, or Mr. Housel, Dr. Housel's motion to deny the request, so we still have no action. Your vote is 2-3. 2-3. Two 2-3. Two two three. Three. Two three. That's what I'm saying. There were right. two for it, three against the motion. Okay, so you need another motion. So the motion failed. So we still have no action on the case because the motion was to deny. So we don't have action on the case. Am I? You're correct. Okay. Well, any, other, any other discussion before we try to do something? Before I call for another question? I don't know if I'm out of line, but I'd like the motion that um, we temporarily table this first case until we can talk about the second. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I got a motion on the floor to temporarily table this case. We'll move it to the end of the meeting. Do I have a second? Hold on. I think I'm not understanding what took place here. I'm motioning that this request is denied. You got a second. You called the question. You called for the vote. The vote was. There was two to support your okay. denial stand. There were three opposed to your denial, therefore, your motion failed. Okay, I have motion on the floor from Scott Orenstein to postpone action on this for a few minutes until we see the next case, which is basically the same thing, different place. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second, Dr. Howell. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay, you now must postpone temporarily. Okay, next case. Application 2014-08, same person, similar thing, different location. Okay, this request is from Dr. Aromas. It's on the corner of North Alabaster Road, North Crossing Circle, also a medical facility. Um, just a little bit less than half an acre, I mean a little bit less than an acre and contains a 8,100 square foot professional office building in its own CC. They are proposing to place the accessory structures containing the solar panels up near North Valdosta Road, as you can see in the site plan. Right in this area, not here, staff has reviewed the request deem them accessory structures while we do support solar energy. They, we also consider them to be placed on accessory structures, which are required to be either in the side yard or the rear yard, not located near a street and at least 10 feet away from the front yard. These are located in the front yard and about seven feet or so away from the property line. So they're requesting two variances, A from setback, B for location. Staff did review it. We're concerned about the trees providing shade, therefore kind of mitigating the solar receptacles, for lack of a better word. And we are also concerned about the aesthetics down North Valdosta Road. We reviewed it, found no hardship, and recommend for them. Here's what I think the problem is. Has there been given any consideration given to how do we classify these in the future? Because this is the first time that this is coming. I mean, this, this is not the last time. time. So how do we get this declassified as an accessory structure? Because I don't, I don't agree with that. It needs to be classified something else, like a you know, 
covered parking or something, because that's where my hang up is, because I keep, you know, keep the furniture in and accessory structure. It so, is. But it's open, it's, it's, in my mind, when I see accessory structure, I mean, I know what you're saying, the sense of the word accessory structure is something that's not really a structure. There, there's too many, there's two different terminologies. Um, there's accessory building and accessory structure. This is not an accessory building. It doesn't have walls, it's not an enclosed space. Okay. It's an accessory structure just like any other carport. Okay. And that's in the same category. Well, it's just what it is, it's a carport. Solar panels are irrelevant. I, I agree, I'm having to think about it. It's a carport. Uh, no different than a house that wanted a freestanding carport in the front yard of their house. It would need the same variance. So when I think of that, and maybe I'm wrong, and tell me if I am, but when I think of an accessory structure, carport, I mean, I envision what you see down there on St. Augustine Road with, you know, four poles and a metal shed roof that, you know, comes down the sides. I mean, I'm seeing it with four poles around. I'm not seeing it as a cantilever. I mean, this to me looks like you know, school construction when you did when you did bus canopy loading and unloading and that kind of stuff. And I mean, the, I mean, that's different to me. That doesn't look like accessory. Maybe I'm a well, it, it's still a different, but there's no different than if you put something like that in the front yard of your house. But I'm just if saying, they attach it to a building, then it becomes an expansion of the existing building. I'm just saying, if we continue to classify it as an accessory structure, it's going to continue to present problems down the road because this is covered parking, and, and I think that we're going to get more and more of this, and we should think well, a little further. Well, then that's, that's the case for city council to address this. I agree, and I'm not usually the one that gets off on something that's not relative to what we're talking about. Well, here. right, in covered parking, I mean, I would, if they were saying, we want to put, you know, seven, seven ninety-five metal little things out in the front of the parking lot, I'd go, ooh, gross, not that. That's what I thought. So. But, but, you know, this is sort of a different thing. These kinds of parking structures are in, in downtown Atlanta all over, and uh, they provide covered parking, and they're in front yards, and they're on busy streets, and they look horrible. They look like, dang, I want to zoom in and park in that spot because it's covered up. So, mm -hmm. I, I... Right, and in the downtown environment, you have zero setbacks. Right. So what about, let me ask you this, what about signs? I thought this what about signs on, on 84, for instance? They're kind of lined up down 84. Similar in, in, in nature, right? Yeah. I mean, you pull up under it, it's single can goals, can the building, Right. <laughs> and it's considered part of the building. That one is. Yeah. Is there a reason on this particular one that they can't do it on North Crossing? On that side? Two front yards. It's front yards. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. You've got a road in front. They have two front yards. It's the location within the property and the distance from the property line. But the main issue is the location within the property. If it was in the rear yard or next to the building, it would be different. So, uh, can we see the map again for this one? in this one to connect it to the building because there's not any parking immediately adjacent to the building. Is that correct? Well, it could connect it, it just wouldn't be county parking. Or you'd have to reconfigure that side parking lot. Mm -hmm. But I mean, keep in mind if the shade of the parking spaces is a concern, the east parking spaces are shaded. Yeah, there's some pretty good trees out here now. Well, it's not just trees, there's a lot of, you know, both of these lots have a lot of shrubs and a lot of landscaping around there. These structures are going to provide a lot of shade and it's going to affect, I would think, the growth and longevity of that landscaping in that area. And providing shade over parking spaces is not good for parking. Well, and, and plants don't grow on parking spaces. It's their cars park on parking spaces. No, the shade on the structure is going to move throughout the day. And over the landscape area, which may or may not affect the landscaping that is in place now. Well, I don't yeah, think that would be an issue when it comes down to the zoning aspect of it. No. I think we need to look at the regulations which is calling for and the variance and not bring in all these circumstances that might or might not affect my decision. Exactly. And I would remind you, you have variance review criteria in your packets. Those are the standards by yeah. which you judge the variance. Yeah, and the, the simple fact that we, some of us or most of us, <laughs> might think this is the up and coming thing right now. 
the council has said no. And until city council says, hey, we need to take this and take it out of an accessory structure and deem it something else and allow it, then it's up to the city council. But I don't know that it's up to us. We have the power. We can do it. We can grant it. But I don't know that it's a thing to do. But I, I think we all need to be aware of it. Parking is fine, it's just it needs to meet the development standards. This is more of a streetscape issue. That's one of the reasons the provisions in the code about accessory structures not being in the front yards up close to the property line. Well, if they want to do covered parking, how, how they have put in the backyard, well, they don't have a backyard. You could attach it to the building and then it's subject to the building setback. So you could right. go in the front yard, just not all the way to the street. You'd have right. to observe the front yard setback. Yes. And the buildings are built, one of them recently. These are not included on the plans. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're supportive of solar panels, but mm -hmm. I mean, in this case, it's an accessory structure carport. The fact that there's solar panel on the brick of carport is irrelevant. The bottom line is trying to be zero net energy. And that's going to be a benefit for the person who owns the building. Absolutely. And, and there's other places you can put solar panels besides the roof of carport. That's my point. Well, but another objective is to have covered parking. Yes. For their clients. So, is... But I don't think that's the part of the bed. Well, then this accessory structure is covered parking. If they built a structure and they didn't put solar on it, they would still be able to have the structure.
Give us just a minute. Give you just a minute. Question though, yeah. in your drawings, you show that the, that the on this particular site, the slope on those solar panels are sloping down towards the road. It seems probably to me that you're sloping these a little bit the other way. It's probably just a, it's it's the other way. Yeah, it will come the other way. They have different options. Man. Right. Yeah, I just there was one circle here. Right. Yeah, right. It looks completely opposite of what it got. Right. 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 These right. trees are here now. That's the north. Right. Actually. South is right here, so right. we don't care about these trees here. It's always at the angle, you know. So even these, uh, the trees that are right here, they are, you know, they will not be, you know, really much. If there's a little shade drops, you know, that's right. okay. So, so actually, for me, I think you have a doctor here who wants to do the right thing for his patients. He's going to make a significant investment. It's been approved, approved by George Power. They want it as part of the advanced solar initiative, and we're going to benefit from our green. Yes. We are at a point, I understand your argument, we got city council and the rules that were presented to us that we're trying to bend or bruise or whatever. But that's the benefit that you have to be in approving ordinance because it makes sense. That we was that, this is that. We do not make the ordinances. All we're talking about is a variance to the ordinance. Right. You can approve a variance. No. We can approve the variance. We can deny the variance. That's what this board is for. And that's what we're trying to do right now. The question is do you want us to decide now or do you want to wait? No, we, we, we would like to take the both cases. Is that a question? I don't know which way the board might vote. I mean, it gives you 30 days to do some more research. And or, or we can decide right yeah. now, and I don't know what the board is going to decide. I make a motion on the table for 30 days. I have a motion on the board, on Second. the floor from Gretchen to postpone for 30 days until the next regular scheduled meeting. I have a second from Scott Orenstein. All in favor, raise your hand and hold it. Four, all opposed. Four, one, motion passed. We will see you again here the second Tuesday in September. Thank you. Thank you. The second. Second Tuesday, first Tuesday is absolutely. Okay, other business. Uh, we have the other agenda I make a motion that we. Well, I call her motion was on both sides. Table that one too. I have motion to postpone for 30 days or until the next regular scheduled meeting the prior case that has been postponed or committed to support. Do I have a second? I have a second for Tennessee Highway. All in favor, raise your hand. Guys. Okay, so we have a unanimous five over. Oh, you want it? Okay. Uh, I think anybody that doesn't want these, I'll take it. Time out. Hold on. Can I have a time out, please? Dr. Townsend, I'm going to take the motion. Did you vote against or against? I'm voting against. Okay. Save money until next month. First motion is 4 4 1. Oh, I'm second. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, remember, everybody, next meeting will not be first Tuesday in September. It will be second Tuesday in September. Uh, approval of minutes for June. Do I get a motion? I read them. Didn't see anything. Motion is highly second. Second. We can call. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Any other business? Anything going on? All right, thank you. Uh, we uh, we I thought we just. We did. We lost one. We got a good one. I just had a real quick question. I had a